Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's start to go over these settings so that they can uh, get demystified for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on a close area right here of our model, something like this, and I'm going to do an IPR, this area right here. This way we can see the effects of our changes a little more clearly and a little bit more up close. Okay, so you can see how the lighting is. Right now the lighting is not too great here. You can see there's some blotching, artifacting. The light solution right now is not very accurate, so to speak. So let's start up here with these final gathering settings. So let me go ahead and collapse all of these other areas over here of the render settings window. And under final gathering, we can turn final gathering on and off as we saw. Then we have an accuracy parameter. The accuracy parameter is going to go ahead and control the quality. Now the impact on rendering time with the accuracy parameter is going to be very high. So if I take this and I max out the slider to 1024, you'll notice there's a lot more final gathering going on. And you can see the final gathering going on as that sort of uh, effect just before the render actually starts. You see sort of a sort of a refractive effect on the screen there where it looks kind of kind of blurry. Okay? Now, the accuracy is going to determine how many rays are used per sample point. What that basically means is the more rays you use, the better the final gathering is going to look. The less rays you lose, uh, you use, the faster it's going to render, but the less quality you're going to have. So when you're doing preview renders and things, you should do something very low. Like, say, 32 rays is what I like to do when I'm just doing previews. And you can see the difference right there. If I save this image out, I crank this up to 1024. It takes a, a lot longer to render out, as you can see. And it's a pretty substantial difference, as you can see. If I go to the first uh, render here with 32 rays, it looks very blotchy, very inaccurate, doesn't look good at all. A lot of artifacting, very, uh, very nasty. If I go over here to the left, this looks a lot better. It doesn't look that great, but it looks a lot better than this. As you can see in this one right here, it's nice and smooth on the ground. And if I go to this one, there's a bunch of blotching here all over the place. The lighting is basically very uneven and doesn't look very nice. Okay, so let me take that back down to 32. Now, the point density. This is going to determine the amount of final gather points that are uh, pre-computed. Editor, edit that out of the video, edit that out of the video. I'm going to start again in 3, 2, one. Now down here we have a point density parameter. This basically controls the amount of final gather points that are computed. Now the default setting is one. I recommend that keeping it at one. If you lower it, you'll do less uh, less final gather points. However, it's going to reduce the quality. I recommend leaving it at the default setting and not using the point density to control the quality or the speed of the render. You should leave it at the default of one and use other parameters to control the quality of the render such as the accuracy parameter and point interpolation as well as a couple of others that we're going to see. So point interpolation, what's that? Well, final gathering works best and it works quick when it uses point interpolation. What that means is that points, when they're a certain distance from each other, they're going to interpolate, they're going to smooth, they're going to combine. Mental rate is going to average their values out in order to get us a quicker, much faster final gathering calculation. Now, point interpolation is good in the sense that it speeds up render time and it smooths out artifacts with the final gathering. The bad side to point interpolation is that it sacrifices light accuracy. So your lighting won't be as physically accurate with uh, interpolation as if it didn't have interpolation. So that's the, the draw the so that's the drawback to using interpolation is the fact that using high interpolation smooths out the final gathering but it's also going to reduce the physical accuracy so let me remove that old image that was there okay so if I increase this point interpolation to say 50 this is what we have we go ahead and save that and if I knock the point interpolation as low as 5 this is what we have now you notice that before with using a point interpolation of 50 we get a very smooth result this is because the final gather points are being interpolated. They're being smoothed out over our scene. And right here, they're not. This is actually, believe it or not, uh, much more correct in terms of physical accuracy than this over here on the right. Even though this may look to you at first glance like it's correct, it's actually not. 
because you notice on the edges of objects, we just uh, kind of get this strange shading here where you don't see any kind of shadowing, any occlusion there, which we actually should be seeing. Like this right here. Now you can see that there's some kind of shadowing going on here at the edges. It looks very nasty and looks very uh, full of artifacts, but that's actually the way it's supposed to render out. So why is it rendering out all blotchy? That's because we need to add more accuracy, but we'll go over that in a moment. Over here we have a primary diffuse scale. What this basically does, it changes the color as well as the scale of these final gather bounces because what's going on is final gather lighting is bouncing around in our scene. So if I take the primary diffuse scale and I change it to say red, the final gathering now looks red. Or I could change it to green or give it a hint of blue or anything I want. So I'll go back to white. I can also go here to HSV, change the value here from 1 to say 2. And the final gathering effect becomes much stronger. In this case, it doubles. And now it's just way too bright. Now the secondary diffuse scale, you'll notice that looks similar to the primary diffuse scale, but as I change the colors, it updates in the IPR, but nothing seems to happen. So what's going on? How come it's not updating here? The reason is because the secondary diffuse scale only works with secondary diffuse bounces. Right now you'll see that the diffuse bounces for secondary is set to zero. By default, there is one diffuse bounce going on in this scene, which is the reason why we can see final gathering at all. The secondary diffuse bounces parameter allows you to add extra diffuse bounces. So what's the good thing about adding diffuse bounces and what are any possible side effects or drawbacks? The good thing to adding extra diffuse bounces, I'll add one so you can see, it brightens up the scene because light is bouncing around a little bit more. So interior scenes, for example, can look a little bit more natural and in many cases can look a bit more realistic. Now the trade-off is that you're going to go ahead and increase the render time overall. So secondary diffuse bounces with final gathering is actually pretty slow and adds a lot of extra render time. Now in this specific scene you can't really tell because it's rendering out so fast. But if you're doing a production scene like let's say the apartment scene that we've been working on earlier uh, throughout this tutorial, it's actually going to slow final gathering down uh, considerably to say the least. So adding more final gather secondary diffuse bounces is not exactly a very smart thing to do if you're trying to get an optimized render to, to go as quickly as possible. Okay, the default setting is zero, which means there's just one default diffuse bounce in the scene. Now let's add an extra diffuse bounce, and now let's see what the secondary diffuse skill does. If I go here and I change this to green, for example, now you'll notice something very strange happen. The scene still looks kind of gray and white because it's using a primary diffuse scale. But you'll also notice that there is a hint of green. Almost looks like algae or some kind of moss growing on the, on the sides of our model here. That's because that represents the secondary diffuse bounces. That's the secondary diffuse lighting that's bouncing around in our scene one extra time. Okay, So if I come in here and I increase the value of that to say 2, now it'll become more apparent. You can see that. That's that extra secondary diffuse bounce. So let me hit cancel there. And uh, I'll leave it green for now. Looks kind of interesting actually. Okay, down here we have the final gathering map settings. Now I'm not going to go over this in this video because um, there's a few things we have to go over this and I want to save that for the next video after this one. So for the moment, we're just going to skip that section of parameters here. And we'll go down here to Final Gathering Quality. Final Gathering Quality. What do these three parameters do? What this filter does, it helps to eliminate some speckling. It helps to control the contrast of the Final Gather result. Let's go ahead and let's save this image out here. And we'll go to Filter and we'll change it from 0 to something like, say, 2. Now I'll render out again. If I go back to the first one, this is what we have. Now let me go back to the new one, and now this is what we have. As you can see, the darkers become dark, while the brights, well, the brights stay pretty much at the brightest that they can be, which is uh, what we're seeing right now. So it helps to basically improve the contrast here of the image and control every any kind of uh, over brightness. Because if you look at the first image, areas that are dark in these dark areas, 
Well, these areas should actually be darker, but right now they're too bright. What the filter does, it comes in and it corrects that behavior. Now, the default filter size in Maya 2009 is zero. Zero turns the filter off. I recommend using a default filter size of one, which is going to give you a good balance here. You can see that the contrast is not too strong, but those uh, dark areas and corners there that should be darker are. Okay, so I would leave the filter size to uh, to one is pretty good. Then we have the fall off start and fall off stop parameters. What do these do? These control where final gather rays start and where they stop. By default, these settings are turned off. That's why they're set to zero. This means that final gather rays can be traced all over the scene for long distances. They're not limited as to how far they can reach or sample objects in the scene. By changing these parameters, you can actually control when the, fall, when the uh, final gather rays start and when they stop. So basically, what does that come down to? What that comes down to is the fact that using these parameters, you can actually reduce render time with final gathering because you're limiting how far the final gather rays can reach. Now let me take the fall off stop parameter. Let me first get rid of this old image there inside the render view. Let's take the fall off stop parameter and let's put it to about say 100. Now you notice the render comes out black. All we see is the background. Why is this happening? This is happening because the final gather rays can only go up to a distance of 100 in world space inside of our scene. After they reach 100, we're basically telling it to cancel out those final gather rays. Because our environment dome is so big, it's actually farther than a distance of 100. So because we limit it to 100, those rays can't reach from the dome to our little miniature city over here. Which can be a problem in this case because now the, in, uh, the scene is rendering now completely dark. So we'll increase that to 1000. And now we can see our scene again. It's a little bit dim and a little bit dark, but we can actually see something. And if we continue to increase that say 2000 now we can see more and more and more and an even better way to illustrate how these fall off parameters work are like this let me close this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to create polygon primitives I'm gonna create another sphere and I'm gonna create it right about here I'm gonna create myself a little sphere right there and I'm gonna move it out of the ground right there okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the sphere I'm going to go to assign existing material and I'm going to assign it this surface shader that I created earlier for the environment dome. Okay, let's do another IPR. Let's do an IPR of this area right there. All right, perfect. Because this sphere has the surface shader applied to it, it's basically going to work as a sort of incandescent light bulb here that lights up our scene or anything that's very close to the, to the sphere. All right, let me put the fall off stop to zero, which is the default. And now let's go ahead and put it to something like 10. Everything is dark in the scene except this area around the sphere. Why is this happening? Well, because final gather rays can be sampled up to 10 units away from wherever the source is. In this case, the source is this sphere with the surface shader. And because the area around it, this, uh, this model of a little miniature city here, is less than 10 units away, it's going to be affected by the lighting from the sphere with final gathering, as you can see. So as I increase this to say 20, the light can reach a little bit farther. If I reach say 100, well it's not going to reach much farther because of the brightness of the sphere. I would have to increase the brightness of the shader on the sphere for the lighting to become stronger and reach a little bit farther. But I think you get the idea. I can also control the fall off start. What this means is that the final gather rays won't start at the origin here which is the sphere. They can start a little bit farther away like out here or further away. So if I give the fall off start, say, a value 5, or let's say something like 10, let's take the fall off stop here and give it something like 20. It's a little bit difficult to see there. Let's try 20 and 50. Yeah. Editor, edit that out of the video, edit that out of the video. Oh. Okay, we're just going to edit that out of the video, the fall off start stuff. Uh, let's keep going here. Starting again in 3, 2, 1. So you can see how you can use these parameters to control the final gathering. 
Now, I like to uh, personally just leave the default setting of 0 and 0. And just let it render out. And uh, I, I, I don't really like to use the fall off start and stop parameters. But they could come in useful. Just depends on the situation that you find yourself in. Down here we have final, gather, uh, final gathering tracing. Final gathering tracing controls the amount of times that final gather rays can be used in reflections and refractions. That's when you're using things like uh, transparent materials, say like glass or anything that uh, that reflects a lot of uh, light, say like a mirror or a really shiny surface, anything like that. That's what you would use reflections and refractions for down here. So if you're seeing that your scene has mirrors or has glass, a lot of shiny objects and transparent objects like glass, and your final gathering just doesn't look right, perhaps the final gathering isn't being taken into account when you look at a reflection in a mirror in your scene. It probably means that your reflection rays here for final gathering are too low. Same thing with your refraction rays. And the max trace depth uh, just basically combines these two rays. So it allows the, uh, the renderer to compute up to a maximum of two rays combined. So it could be two reflections or one reflection and one refraction or two refractions. Okay. Now, me personally, I like to increase this uh, to pretty high numbers. Not too high, but something higher than this. Something like maybe 5, 5, and 10 will work out best. Right now, we won't see a difference in this scene, though, because we don't have any mirrors and glass. We don't have a production scene set up. It's just this very simple, basic, primitive scene. All right? Down here, we have this option to optimize for animations. Now, traditionally, with Final Gathering, one problem that a lot of people used to have is final gather flickering as it was called and it still exists you just have to know how to control these settings to do a proper animation with final gathering without getting any type of flickering going on with the final gather result what happens is if the settings are too low and they're not set up just right when you do an animation and a camera moves around for example you will see this strange flickering uh, on the usually on the corner of objects on flat surfaces like this you won't see it that much but you can if your settings are are not good enough. What this setting for optimized for animation uh, optimized for animations does, it tries to fix that, tries to correct that by changing the algorithm around uh, to cater better for animation and camera movement. Then we have this use radius control. If we turn this on, that there there was a car honking in the background. You got to do that again. Start again in three, two, one. Then we have this use radius quality control. If we turn that on, you'll notice that now the max radius down here and the min radius down here now both become active and we can adjust them. These two parameters allow you to control the quality of the final gathering with a huge amount and degree of control. Those settings are best reserved for advanced users and persons who have a lot of experience with final gathering. But even though this is an introductory tutorial, I'll show you very quickly how to get started using these parameters. After that, you can experiment on your own and test them out. The min and max radius are a little bit difficult to use because there's no magic number. There's no setting that you can use that's going to work great for every single scene. All scenes are different and all scenes have uh, their own final uh, tuning that has to be made for them to look good using the max and min radius. In recent times, however, Final gathering was changed so that persons can control it easier using the point interpolation up here and just the accuracy. So you don't have to fiddle around with too many parameters. But if you're feeling a little bit more daring and you want to have more control over final gathering, I recommend using the radius quality control. I personally like to use these settings as they give me much more control over the quality of final gathering. Over the quality of final gathering. And the way that I recommend you use them is like this. Have a look at your scene and decide or, or figure out what the size of your scene is. Take 10% of that overall size and that'll be your max radius. Then take 10% of the max radius and that'll be your min radius. So let's say we'll use a max radius of about 10. And we'll use a min radius of about 1 because 1 is... 10% of 10. Okay? Now, the smaller these radii are, the tighter the final gathering is going to be, which is good because it's going to increase the physical accuracy of the final gathering. The bad side to it is it's going to introduce a lot of artifacting, which means we have to go ahead and add more accuracy rays. 
You'll also notice that when I use the max and min radius, the point interpolation churns off. So let's go ahead and lower this down. Let's lower this to a max radius of 1 and a min radius of 0.1, which is 10% of 1. And you notice now we start to get more blotching in the scene. Okay. And if I change this to something like 0 0.5, 0 0.05 down here, now I get much more blotchiness in the scene. But I also get a lot more detail in these shadowed corners. Let me do something very quickly here. Let me get rid of this sphere. I'm just going to select it and delete it. Open up an IPR again. The little IPR in the region there. Okay, have a look at this area back here. And I'll even zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see. This area of this wall back here, you'll notice it's very detailed. We can see the line of where the wall is. And we can see this nice shadowing here being produced by the final gathering. If I turn off the radius control and I just use the point interpolation, say I use something like 10, which was the default, it's not so well defined anymore. Let me, let me save that image out. Let me go back here and use the radius quality control. Let me zoom in here. Here's the first image. You notice it's not very detailed. Here's the second image. Looks a lot more detailed. As you can see, huge world of difference there. That's because the lighting accuracy is much better. In the first one, however, we don't have accuracy, but we have more smoothing with the point interpolation. And in the second image, this one, we have more artifacting. We don't have smoothing. But in exchange, we have more accuracy. So it really depends on what you're going for. If you want to set up the final gathering quick and you don't want to bother with too many parameters and tweaking, you can just go with the point interpolation up here by turning off the use radius quality control. And that will give you a pretty decent result very quickly without, needing, uh, without having to have too much experience and knowledge about final gathering. But if you really want to control the accuracy and you don't mind the extra rendering time of adding more accuracy rays, like so, then you can go ahead and use the radius quality control to get uh, more fine tuning control of the physical accuracy and the quality of the final gathering in your scene. Now you notice that there's this option down here that says view and in parentheses says radii and pixel size. What that basically means is that right now by default this max and min radius down here is being calculated based on the space inside of our scene, the 3D space. So this actually means 0.5 units, and this actually means 0.05 units in Maya space in here. If we switch this to view radii and pixel size, what it's going to do, it's going to change the radius uh, of both the min and max radius here. It's going to base it on the pixel size of the image, so it's not going to be based on world space anymore. I like it to be spa uh, based on world space as opposed to the pixel size of the image. It's just a more consistent way of working, and it just works for me best. Okay? But you have the option there. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. We've been going on here for a pretty long time. And I'm going to end this video here. We have a lot more to talk about Final Gathering. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Final Gathering map parameters, how those work, and how they can help you out with rendering out Final Gathering.